I would like to call the Cookville City Council meeting for Thursday, November 17th to order. May I have a roll call, please? Councilman Baji? Present. Councilman Walker? Present. Mayor Wheaton? Here. Vice Mayor Eldridge? Present. Councilman Gilbert? Here. Five present. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask those who wish to do so to stand for the invocation tonight given by Pastor Scott McKinney from Cookville First Baptist Church to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to live in Cookville, Tennessee, for the town that you have brought before us, Lord, to be able to serve in and, and live in. And God, I thank you for the council. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your divine plan in their life to be a part of this time. Lord, I just ask for your hedge protection upon them. I ask you, God, to lead them with great wisdom as they lead this city. I ask, Father, that you would bless them and that they would know your direction and that they would look to you for all things. I ask, Father, that you would be with all of those who serve our community from EMS to police to fire and beyond. God, I just ask that you would be with them. Thank you, Lord. We live in a safe place. I ask, God, that it would continue to be that way. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know that you do. So, Father, I ask that you would guide us with your wisdom into each day. Thank you for this time, this meeting. I pray your blessings upon this meeting and for the decisions that will be made here tonight. That they'd be honor, in honor of you and in accord with your will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge to Thank you. Item three, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Motion made by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you very much. Item four, a proclamation. I do have a proclamation tonight to present uh, in honor of White Ribbon Day that is going to be celebrated here in Cookville. Whereas our community is deeply concerned about the public health and public safety issues of violence against women and all gender-based violence, including sexual assault, rape, domestic violence, stalking, sexual harassment, human and sex trafficking. And whereas public awareness of this tragic problem is a key to preventing further suffering and loss of life and the risk for human destruction can be reduced through awareness and education and all people without exception or exemption can live a life free from domestic violence. Whereas the violence of all forms is one of the most disruptive and tragic events a family and community can experience, and whereas the White Ribbon Day campaign believes that the majority of men wish to make a positive contribution towards ending this violence, and that by reimaging re manhood, we can break down the rigid gender roles and power dynamics that contribute to and foster gender-based violence, and whereas our municipality, along with other municipalities across Tennessee, is committed to taking tangible steps to raise awareness, support survivors, hold offenders accountable, and promote safety, equity, and nonviolence in our community, and whereas our municipality recognizes the life-saving work of White Ribbon, Tennessee, located within our municipality, and whereas the White Ribbon Day pledge states, from this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution in ending violence against women and all gender-based violence. Now, therefore, I, Lauren Wheaton, mayor of the city of Cookville, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim Thursday, November 17, 2020, to be White Ribbon Day in Cookville, Tennessee, and do urge all the citizens to take cognizance of this event and to participate fittingly in its observance by taking the White Ribbon Day pledge and wearing and recognizing the significance of the white ribbon, which seeks to end all gender-based violence and ask men to stand up and be counted as against social values among males that contribute to that violence. This day, the 17th of November, 2022. And I think we have some people from the white ribbon right here. There's Andy. Yes, we will present this to you after afterwards, but thank you all for being here. And uh, they were the ones that spearheaded this, just a little bit about it, started in Australia. And we are the first city in in the state to recognize white the white ribbon day um so i'm very excited about that thank you for bringing that to us today so you're welcome and i have one more recognition to make if you've noticed a little group of girls in the back row back there who are being very well behaved i have to say so far that is troop 889 and uh a little biased because one of them is my daughter kennedy that is our girl scout troop um I, along with Hannah Davis, we are their troop leader, and I forced them to come to a city council meeting to learn about city government, and they are going to thank me very graciously afterwards. So wanted to recognize y'all. Thank you for coming, and you better behave. <laughs> yeah, I've got a gavel. Uh, all right.
five, old business, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on November 3rd, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Bocci. Any discussion? All votes. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you, 5B. Consider on second final reading ordinance 0221021, rezoning property located at 4, 8, 10, 16, and 18 West Spring Street, tax map 053G, Group J, parcels 001.00, 002.00, 002.01, 002.01, 002 and 005.01 from CL Local Commercial to CBD Central Business District, Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. No changes to the ordinance since first reading, and we've had no cause or comments. So I uh, ask for your approval on second and final reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion, so, by, Vice, whoops, motion by Vice Mayor Eldridge and second by Councilman Walker. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you, 5C. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0221022, rezoning property located at 116 and 130 North Hickory Avenue and 169 and 175 Montgomery Avenue from MS Medical Services to CL Local Commercial and establishment of REO District for the same. Mr. Ward. Thank you again, uh, Mayor and Council. No changes to the ordinance since first reading. We've had no cause or comments, so I ask for your approval on second reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Bocci and seconded by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you, 5D. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0221023, amending the zoning code for the addition of an RS 7.5 zoning district, Mr. Ward. Again, uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. No changes to the ordinance, no cause or comments. If I'm ask for approval on second and final reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Baji. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Thank you. And Senate Agenda 6A, consider awarding bids for transformers, and 6B, consider approval of price adjustment for vehicle servicing utilizing the statewide bid contract number 207, approved by the City Council on February 2nd, 2020. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Motion by Councilman Gilbert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. Oh, it's correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. New business 7A, consider on first and first reading ordinance 0221128, amending Title V, Chapter 1 of the Cookville Municipal Code to increase the threshold for competitive sealed bids as per TCA Section 123212. Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members, as we discussed at our work session on Monday, um, the policies and procedures for purchases by the city departments are specified in Title V, Chapter 1 of our Municipal Code. Um, Section 501 provides that all purchases by the city shall be made in accordance with the Municipal Purchasing Law of 1983, which is in TCA Title VI, Chapter 56. Um, our code currently specifies in compliance with TCA 656-306 that the maximum amount for public advertisement and competitive bidding for all departments is at $10,000. So anything over $10,000 must be competitively bid except that the electric department, which has the exclusion, can go up to $20,000. Earlier this year, um, the state legislature passed uh, public chapter 1016, which allows municipalities to increase the threshold over which uh, competitive bidding and public advertisement must be done to not to exceed $25,000. It also requires that at least three written quotes be obtained when possible for purchases costing more than 40% of the, of the bid maximum. So if the bid is at maximum set at 25,000, then the, the bid, uh, the area that would you have to have uh, quotes for would be between 10 and $25,000. 
I discussed this with each of our departments. They all believe there's a need for this, and this is primarily due to the inflation that we've seen in terms of the cost of materials and equipment. And uh, we could, the council is allowed to do this if done by ordinance, and this ordinance would increase and amend um, Title uh, Five of the Municipal Code to increase the threshold from ten thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars. It would also amend Section Five Hundred One to specify that, when possible, three written quotes are required for purchases costing less than twenty five thousand, but more than ten thousand. And the bid limit would apply to all departments. So this would also apply to the electric department. I also want to note that we will still continue the policy of any purchase by any department of over a thousand dollars must have the written authorization of the city manager. But I'd recommend your approval of ordinance uh, 221128. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. <clears throat> oh, that's correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. 7B, consider approval of agreement for professional design services for renovations for fire station one. Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members on the screen is an existing floor plan of the lower floor of City Hall that um, we retain the services of AEI to complete. Uh, if you could go to the next slide there, Don. Uh, we also retain services from AI to give us a proposed uh, floor plan to remodel the fire department um, portion of the lower floor. Um, the need for renovating station one, which is the main station here at City Hall, um, was identified last year, and we did include funds in the fiscal year 22-23 budget. I think we included $300,000 to complete the renovations of the lower floor. Um, in March of this year, you did approve a contract um, with AEI to do this assessment and to come up with this preliminary floor plan. John, if you go to one more, and this is a, a overall view, and it picks on the extreme right there would be new location for the fire chief and his assistant. It adds several bedrooms. It also, on the left here, it includes an area for that would be a clean area when they come in from a fire. They've got an area to clean up and not contaminate because when they fight fires, they come in with some nasty stuff on them. So this is, would be a much better uh, layout for our fire personnel. What I'm asking for tonight, um, to do this renovation, we're going to have to have some architectural work, including mechanical plans, um, construction plans, electrical plans. <laughs> And if we pursue this, we'll, we'll, this is probably some work that we can't do uh, in-house. We'd have to bid out for contractors. This um, professional service agreement, design agreement in this, AEI, would help us through the whole process. They prepare the plans, help us through the bid, and then they would help monitor as the renovations are done. The total cost for these services is $19,875, and I'd recommend for your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Baji. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 7C, consider authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for a fuel card program with WEX Bank utilizing the NASPO statewide bid contract. Ms. Simmel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, council members, we use a fuel card program to enable our employees to purchase fuel for city vehicles and equipment. We currently have about 450 fuel cards in fiscal year 22. Um, the purchase is totaled approximately 937,000 on those cards. We have used the WEX program for many years and the current contract since 2018 has been utilizing Metro Nashville Davidson County contract, which expires in February, 2023. We're requesting your approval this evening to renew with WEX using the statewide contract. Last year, the state of Tennessee joined the WEX NASPO master contract as a participating ent entity, which allows us to, um, and makes this contract available for us as a statewide contract. The rebates under the new contract will be 1.7% paid quarterly. Payment terms are 45 days and the new contract will expire December 31st, 2025. There's no fee for changing to this contract, and I respectfully request your approval. Thank you so much. Is there a motion? No move. Motion by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? 
All vote. All votes correct. By the yes, motion carries. Okay, thank you. 7D, consider approval to sell two lots in the Highland Business Park and authorize the city manager to execute a purchase sale agreement with Hollingsworth Company. Mr. Ward. Thank you, Mayor Council members. Um, these two properties are identified as lot A1 and a portion of lot A1 and lot G from the Highlands Business Park Master Plan. Um, you can see those depicted on your screen. The lot A1 is on the western end of uh, the Highlands Business Park and lot G is on the southeast corner of Highlands and Venture Drive. Um, Lot A1 consists of approximately 15.59 acres. Lot G consists of approximately 18.76 acres. The purchase, pro purchase price for lot A1 is uh, $545,650. The purchase price for lot G would be $600,320. Uh, these properties are jointly owned by uh, Putnam County and the city of Cookville. The Hollingsworth Company is an industrial developer who plans to construct two industrial facilities in the Highlands Business Park. Renderings provided by the company depict a 152,160 square foot facility on lot A1 and a 227,760 square foot facility on lot G. Both of these have expansion potential. Most economic development requests for information the city receives includes businesses and industries searching for existing buildings. The city of Cookville has very few modern vacant existing buildings to market. Supply chain issues on construction materials and company uh, equipment have made an existing building very desirable for speed to market for prospective companies. The city has a successful history with the Hollingsworth Company as Hollingsworth was the developer of the Ficosa building in the Highlands uh, Business Park. Well, I uh, recommend your approval of this action to sell the lots and authorize uh, the city manager to execute the purchase sale agreement. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vice Mayor Eldridge and seconded by Councilman Gilbert. Is there any discussion? All vote. <clears throat> All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank, Thank you, 7E. Consider resolution R221135, authorizing participation in the Public Entity Partners Safety Partners Matching Grant Program. Mr. Sells. Yes, Mayor Council. This is the first of two grant opportunities that we are being provided by Public Entity Partners. This particular grant is called the Safety Partners Loss Control Matching Safety Grant. We are seeking your authority to spend up to $3,000 to be matched by PEP so that we can purchase traffic cones, hard hats, active shooter vests, and reflective safety vests, all of which would comply with OSHA safety standards. So we're asking you for that particular authorization, and I'll answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Bocci. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you, 7F. Consider resolution R221136, authorizing the participation in the Public Entity Partners James L. Richardson Driver Safety Matching Grant. Mr. Sells. Yes, thank you. And as alluded to earlier, this is the second grant, and we are seeking to spend up to $3,100, again, to be matched by PEP so that we can purchase backup cameras for multiple city vehicles and the fire and the electric departments as well as for conducting motor vehicle reports on city, all city employees who operate <clears throat> city-owned vehicles. And again, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Bocci, seconded by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. That's correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 7G, consider approval of soft drink vendor proposal and authorize the city manager to execute a contract for leisure services concession operations. Mr. Woods. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of council. Uh, we, the Department of Leisure Services, operate uh, concession stands at uh, Cane Creek Park, at the Cane Creek Sportsplex, and Youth Fields, at our gymnasium, and uh, also at Dogwood Park. We recently requested proposals from soft drink vendors uh, to be the exclusive provider of drinks for our concession stands for the next five years. Uh, the RFP required the vendors to provide and maintain all of the necessary coolers, 
lighted menu boards and provide us with additional um, undefined incentives. Uh, we received two proposals and uh, we had um, four of our staff members evaluate those proposals uh, independently. I've provided you with uh, the results of that uh, on the scoring and you'll see that um, the uh, the scores there from each individual, a total score, and then the average score for uh, each company that provided, uh, showing that um, the Pepsi proposal was superior and provided fair pricing and better incentives. Uh, I've also provided you here with uh, just a little bit of information about what this, this proposal includes, and that would be, again, uh, vendor provides and maintains all the coolers, uh, and the maintains is, is is a key part of that, not just providing that, but anytime we have any issues, they come out and do the repairs or replacement uh, at all of the facilities. Uh, the vendor provides menu boards and branded accessories, accessories like uh, umbrellas that would go uh, outside at the sportsplex, uh, barrel coolers, portable barrel coolers, uh, chest coolers, uh, uh, banners that we could put up for special events and that sort of thing. Um, they also provide us with access to their full product line at a discounted price. And Pepsi provided us with the incentives uh, up to 100 cases of drinks for department events. Uh, they will provide that for us uh, at our request. They will also provide us with $6,000 cash the first year of the contract and five thousand uh, dollars each year thereafter uh, that we can use for facility upgrades and and whatever we see that uh, is needed there. Uh, so those are some of the reasons that uh, I think Pepsi came out as the uh, proposed or the highest scoring company. And so I'm requesting you approve that proposal and authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with PepsiCo. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion is made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 7-H, consider approval to purchase 11 mobile communication terminals, MCTs, utilizing the source well purchasing cooperative contract. Chief Evans. Uh, Mayor and Council, these uh, MCTs, these are our in-car computer systems, uh, and this is just part of our life cycle replacement program. We we try to rotate those computers out of the vehicles about every five years. Uh, we'll be purchasing Panasonic Toughbooks, uh, a complete system which includes the computer, the docking station, and and, uh, uh, and the wiring system. Uh, each system costs about five thousand fifty-eight dollars seventeen cents a piece. Uh, total uh, cost is $55,639.87. Uh, purchased through Sourcewell contract, the vendor is SHI. Uh, these are budgeted items, uh, partially funded by THSO alcohol safety grant that you approved last month. That's $21,100, and the remaining comes out of our operating budget, uh, $34,539.87. Uh, and as I stated before, they are budgeted items, and I'd recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Seven I consider rescinding seven seven twenty two motion to purchase one pickup truck utilizing the statewide bid contract two zero nine. Chief Evans. Uh, Mayor and Council, like some of the other departments did and previously in the year, uh, we kind of ran up against a hurdle when we uh, uh, tried to purchase uh, the pickup truck. Uh, uh, the pickup truck uh, was approved for purchase on uh, July the 7th of, of this year at a unit cost of $34,785.20. Uh, at that time, the manufacturer canceled that order subsequent to your approval, uh, and that vehicle uh, became no longer available. And... Uh, so I'd recommend rescinding your approval for that purchase. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion is made by Councilman Bocci and seconded by Councilman Gilbert. Any discussion? All vote. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> All that's correct. Five yes, motion carries. 7J, consider approval to purchase one pickup truck utilizing the statewide bid contract 209 Chief Evans. Ironically, uh, <laughs> the vehicle is now available. <laughs> As I stated in uh, in work session, I don't uh, begin to understand the system at this point. I think COVID kind of took its toll on this industry. And uh, so we have now hit another uh, uh, ordering cycle in the vehicle. This vehicle is now available. Uh, and so we're asking to purchase uh, on statewide contract 209 and 250. Uh, 2,500 rather pickup truck uh, unit cost is $38,513.80. Uh, it is a budgeted item and I recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? The yeah. motion is made by Councilman Bocci, seconded by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7K, award, consider awarding bid for construction of Cane substation improvement projects. Mr. Haney. Mayor and council members, uh, we received bids on the construction phase of our Cane Creek substation project. Four bids were evaluated by our engineering consultants with Crow's Electrical Services being the recommended low bid meet specifications at $2,081,123.82. Uh, this is within the budgeted amount for this project, and I would request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Gilbert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Baji. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, 7L. Consider authorizing the city manager to execute a final balance change order, wastewater treatment plant solids handling improvement project. Mr. Turner. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, this is change orders for a project at the wastewater plant, which we basically replaced all of our sludge handling facilities down there. This is a final balance change order. The job's basically complete, except for some closeout documents and stuff. Um, this change order adds 141 days and deducts 68,000, um, deducts 68,858 dollars. This project had several delays due to COVID and supply chain issues. Uh, the final contract price is six million four hundred ninety-five thousand and thirty-seven dollars and forty-five cents which is $1,737.45 over the original bid price. And I'd recommend your approval on this change order. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Gilbert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Eldridge. Any discussion? All votes. All votes correct. Five yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7M, consider authorizing the city manager to execute a cost share agreement with Mr. Tom Cooper to extend sanitary sewer east of Dry Valley Road along Buck Mountain Road. Mr. Turner. Uh, this cost share agreement, as you said, was with Mr. Tom Cooper. It extends sewer from Dry Valley Road up to his property. The extension is what's shown in red on, on this drawing. Uh, this is modeled after previous cost share agreements where we split the cost basically 50-50 with the city picking up the cost for additional additional items that such as taps for properties that we passed. The cost of this extension, which uh, we look, get to look at real prices because the project has been, the bigger project has been bid, so the numbers are firm. Cost of the extension is $44,502, which we're splitting the cost as this agreement is proposed. So his share would be $22,251. In addition to that, the, the city would pay that amount, but in addition to that would pay $8,300 for those taps and such. Um, so I recommend your approval on this agreement. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Bocci. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Walker. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Five yes motion carries. Thank you very much. That concludes the agenda portion of our meeting. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the council on non-agenda items? 
Nope. I also want to recognize that we have our uh, 13th Judicial Justice, Judicial, bleh, Judicial District Circuit Court <laughs> Judge, Honorable Caroline Knight here. Yeah, she's here in support of the White River Coven. Any comments from the council? No. All right. We are adjourned.